What's going on, people? I hope everybody is cool. So today I want to hop on here and talk about something that uh, a lot of Christians and a lot of believers in Christ get wrong, man. And that is how to properly apply scripture to your life. You see, a lot of folks out here are taking verses out of context and using them the wrong way. It's dangerous because if you don't know how to apply the word correctly to your life, you'll end up living in a ball of confusion or worse, doing something that goes against God's will without even realizing. it. OK, now let me give you all an example of what I'm talking about. Number one, let's take a look at righteous versus unrighteous anger. OK, let me give you all an example of that. Now, we've all seen the debate. Between uh, Rizza Islam and Jesse Lee Peters, right? Now, Jesse was saying Rizza was wrong for getting angry, period. I mean, Jesse was saying if Rizza gets angry at anything, then you're a murderer. You all remember that? <laughs> Check out the clip real quick. If you have anger, you have murdered them in your heart. <laughs> all right, all right, we, don't, we don't have to go through that again, all right? It was, it was bad enough, okay? But when Jesse said that, I'm like, hold up, like, that's missing the whole point of righteous anger, which the Bible clearly talks about. Okay? If you follow the thinking of Jesse Lee Peterson, you won't even know how to differentiate between righteous anger and unrighteous anger. So let me dive into it. Righteous anger. That's when you see something wrong happening and you can't stand for it. Right. Uh, you see a child being assaulted by an adult. You should get angry at uh, you see someone forcing themselves on a woman or, you know, an old lady getting scammed out of money. You should get angry at that right? because you see injustice. And you know what? Getting angry at injustice is actually Christ like. OK, the Bible says God is angry with the wicked wind every day, every day. That's Psalms 7, 11. So don't let anyone tell you that being angry at wrongdoing will send you to hell or will make you a murderer. Like Jesse Lee Peterson was telling Riza Islam. OK, that was foolish to say that right? was what was foolish. What's also foolish is when people look away from wrongdoing. OK, and they say things like, well, uh, well I don't want to get angry. You know, I, I see that's happening. I, I know it's wrong, but I don't want to look at it too long because I don't want to get angry now. I, I, I don't want to get out of God's good graces. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that's weak. Not getting angry when you are supposed to get angry. That's crazy. Right? And that'll have you looking real silly out here. Right. Real silly. So you have to be able to properly apply righteous anger versus unrighteous anger. OK, you have to know how to apply that. You see somebody getting hurt wrongfully. You see somebody being attacked wrongfully. You see somebody getting uh, mistreated wrongfully. You should get angry at that because of the God within you. OK, Jesus Christ being in you uh, 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 and he being the epitome of righteousness. When you see unrighteousness, you should get bothered by that. OK, you should get bothered by that. When the Bible tells you to make no friends with an angry person, he's not talking about righteous anger. He's talking about people who just run around here angry for nothing, angry at the world, mad, upset at nothing. OK, just angry folks. He's not talking about those who have righteous anger to be angry at unrighteousness is Christ like because God is angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 7 11. Let's keep it moving, man. And before I keep it moving, look, if you claim to have Christ in you, if you claim to have God in you, then there is no way you can sit back and look at the innocent being harmed or look at the innocent being mistreated and it not bother you. OK, due to the fact that God is in you, due to the fact that Jesus Christ is in you, looking at wrongdoing, looking at injustice, looking at unrighteousness would bother and trouble your spirit because of the Holy Spirit that's in you. If you look at injustice and it does not bother you, then the Holy Spirit cannot be in you, period. OK, it's about what you do with that anger. How do you display that anger? How do you show that anger? When Jesse Lee Peterson told Riza Islam to never be angry, that was actually incorrect and did not line up with the word of God because Ephesians 4 and 26 says 
be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. If it was never meant for you to be angry, then the Bible verse would not have been in there. Anger is a God given emotion. It's about what you do with that anger. Let's keep it moving. Let me give another example. Let me give another example. Um, another thing that Christians do is uh, they misuse the judge not verse. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, let's talk about it. Judge not lest ye be judged. Matthew 7 and 1. Now, people be using that verse to justify not using common sense. Okay, and they do wrong things and they say, hey, you know, I know I'm wrong, but you can't judge me. Don't you judge me. You don't have a right to judge me. Only God can judge me. But that's not all the way true. OK, that's not all the way true. Stick with me. OK, picture this. Picture this. I want you all to imagine this. You're pulling up to a gas station at 3 a.m. Two And now if you're a woman, you shouldn't even be out at 3 a.m. But I'll keep it moving. <laughs> all right. You're pulling up to a gas station at 3 a.m. And you see some shady folks hanging around the gas station. I'm talking about you know, they got mask on, uh, looking at all types of suspect uh, cars driving up to the gas station, pulling off real fast. OK, you see heads peeking from behind the wall of the gas station. You know, <laughs> I mean, just crazy, you know, shady looking stuff. And instead of you using good judgment and going the opposite way or finding a safer spot, instead, you'll look at that situation and say, well, I'm not going to judge. Judge not lest ye be judged, you know, and you're looking at that situation and you say judge not. And then you stroll on up in the gas station. The next thing you know, you come out and your car has gone or, you know, something bad is happening to you. You improperly apply judge not to that situation. You had no business to look at that situation at the gas station and say judge not lest ye be judged. That's not what the Bible meant. The scripture that you should have applied was judge righteous judgment. John 7 and 24. That means if you got a judge, do it right and use discernment. Don't put yourself in danger because you don't want to be judgy. You have to know how to properly apply scripture to life's situations. OK. Let me give you all another example, man. Um. Another verse that people love to twist and take out of context is be still and wait on the Lord. OK, be still and wait on God. Psalms 37, 7. Now, there's nothing wrong with waiting on God. But some people like to say that an excuse for their laziness. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Let me break it down for you. Uh, you want to be a doctor. Right. You want to be a doctor, but you're out here getting bad grades, skipping class, not putting in the work. Right? Then you're saying, well, if God wants me to be a doctor, he'll make it happen. OK, I'm just going to wait on God. Nah, nah, that's not how it works. OK, you're misusing the scripture to justify your lack of effort. OK, what you should be applying to your effort to be a doctor situation is faith without works is dead. James 2 and 26. That means you need to put in the work if you expect God to move on your behalf. Faith without works is dead. OK, you're not going to become a boxer if you never box. anymore. You're not going to become a ball player if you never play ball. You're not going to become a doctor if you do not go to medical school, period. I don't care how much you say you want to be one. I don't care how much you yap and talk about being one. You're not going to be it if you don't take the steps to be it, period. Not right? Has nothing to do with waiting on the Lord. Wait on God once you put forth the effort, okay? Once you've done all you can, then stand. That's biblical. OK, once you put forth the effort, then wait on God when there's nothing left for you to do. Let's keep it moving, man. Now, now. This one right here, this one right here is a big one. All right. People love to quote, not by works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians two and nine. And they say that many of them say that to justify living five. OK. I've heard preachers stand up in a pulpit and preach 
is not about works and there is nothing you could do. And Jesus has already paid it all. And it's not about anything that you do. You don't have to put forth effort. Stop trying to be good. Stop trying to do good. Christ has already paid it all. Okay. And people leave the church. They leave the service saying, hey, I don't have to stop doing this. I don't have to come out of this sin. I don't have to stop living this way. I'm good because God already knows that, you know, I have a heart for him. God already knows that I'm going to do it. So why should I put forth any effort to come out of this? I can just keep doing it because my works don't mean anything. Okay. What's in my heart matters and they keep engaging in willful sin. But I'm like, hold up. They missed the rest of the word, which is what a lot of people do. They quote scripture and they miss a lot of the word. Okay. Now, the Bible says you will be judged according to thy works. Okay. So when I hear people say it's not about works and what I do means nothing, I'm like, wait a minute. Revelations 20 and 12 says you will be judged according to thy works. So if works don't matter, then why are you being judged according to them? Can you, can you explain it? <laughs> because I'm like, the Bible says you will be judged according to your works. Revelations 20 and 12. But I'm constantly hearing people say works mean nothing. And what you do means nothing. And you don't have to work. And you don't have to try to be good. You don't have to try to do good. You don't have to try to work for that. Don't work, man. It ain't about your works. It's about what's in your heart. I've heard people say that. But I'm like, if works don't matter, then why are you being judged according to them? You're telling me works don't matter. But Revelations 20 and 12 says you will be judged according to your works. If works don't matter, why are you being judged for them? Listen, the scripture about not by works is talking about boasting. That's why it says not by works, lest any man should boast. OK, that means trying to show off your good works, trying to look holy in front of man, looking to get praised by man. OK, but the works that do matter, that's the effort you put into getting right with God. That's resisting the temptation of going to old girl house or going to dude's house because, you know, what's going to happen again and again. All right. That's you putting down the bottle of alcohol because you're tired of getting drunk, even though you're a wine taster. You know, I don't get drunk. I just taste wine. But you stay on the floor. OK, <laughs> you stay on the floor, though, but you're just a wine taster. Most most wine tasters are alcoholics. <laughs> All right. But seriously, though. Uh, 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 the work you put into getting right with God, the work you put into resisting the devil so he can flee from you. The work you put into developing a relationship with God, the work you put into drawing closer to God so he can draw closer to you, which is Bible. Those works absolutely matter. Don't let anyone tell you that those works don't matter because they do. The works that don't matter is the works of you looking to get praised by men. The works that don't matter is you doing the work so people can see you. Okay. So people can point and say, hey, look at that righteous man right there. Look how holy he is. And then you puffing your chest out. Those are the works that don't matter. But the works that do matter is the works of you getting a relationship with God. OK, which means that you may have to transfer your mind. You may have to put down the bottle. You may have to come out of the fornication. You may have to come out of the perversion. You may have to come out of the cheating, come out of the lying, come out of the stealing, because all of those acts go against God. OK. You cannot have a true encounter with God and not be transformed, man. I don't care how much you say you've encountered God. Oh, I went into the presence of the Lord tonight, but you came out the same. You cannot have a true encounter with God and still be the same. Something is going to trouble your spirit when it comes to unrighteousness. Come on, man. Y you know, people always say it's not about what you do. I got to get back to that. It's, it's not about what you do. It's about your heart. 
But when you look at the Bible, it sends people to hell for what they do or people send themselves to hell for things they do. Just look at 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, some you're doing, neither idolaters, some you do, nor adultery, adulterous, some you do, nor the effeminate, some you do, okay, or be, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, something you're doing. And the list goes on and on and on. Those actions clearly send you to hell. If you're not inheriting the kingdom of God, then you are inheriting the lake of fire. Those are actions that send you to hell. Those are do's that send you to hell. But then people will turn around and say, hey, man, it's not about what you do. You don't have to stop trying to fornicate. You don't have to stop trying to lie. You don't have to stop trying to cheat. Still, I'm like, hold, hold up, bro. Everything you telling me that I don't have to stop doing, God said will send me to hell. Something ain't adding up here. What's up? Oh, man. <laughs> the point is, man, you need to know how to apply scripture properly to your life. All right? You don't want to be out here confused doing the wrong thing and thinking that you're right. All right. So, so that's why it's important to correctly apply scripture, okay? You don't want to be mixed up out here, man. Walking in circles or walking ball of confusion, thinking you're good when you're not, okay? Not getting angry at things you should be getting angry at, not judging things that you should be judging, okay? All type of craziness. People be all over with these scriptures and don't know how to apply them, okay? But you need to know how to apply the scriptures the right way. OK, it brings clarity. It brings peace. And the only way to learn how to properly apply scriptures to your life is to get closer to God and find out who he is. OK, and you will start to dislike what he dislikes, hate what he hates. OK, etc. And with that being said, man, I'm gonna leave you all with this uh, quote and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, unquote. Philippians 4 and 7, man. All right. So, you know, make sure y'all are applying the word right, man, to what's going on in your life. So uh, with that being said, man, may you all be blessed. Uh, stay encouraged. And I'll be back on the next video. Peace.